Well, we made it to Maker's Mark. I don't know how we made it to Maker's Mark because GPS took us on a sketchy ass one way road, single lane, and then fall off on each side. And then there was other cars coming the other way. And we had to like just come to a complete stop and creep past each other because there was just just no room. It's very sketch. Very sketch. Oh, I didn't think this was the right spot. I was like, Google there's Maps no way. Was not the best today. I was like, there's no way there's a distillery out here. Mm -hmm. I was like, we're gonna and and GPS said it's getting us here within 10 minutes of our tour. So I was like, we're gonna miss it. We're gonna totally miss it. We're here. We're on time. It's all good. Yeah. Yeah, there it is. There's the still out here at Maker's Mark. And you can see the, the fungus. They paint their buildings black because the fungus is going to turn it that black color anyway. You can see it on the trees. That's the fungus from the yeast and the distillation process. So all the foliage out here turns black. But it's beautiful grounds out here. And we got a pretty good tour guide today. He's a funny guy. So uh, I think it's going to be a fun day today. Oh, there's the good stuff. Look at that. Look at all these bats are just fermenting and we just got to see the uh, first barrel that was barreled here at, at uh, Maker's Mark and it was barreled in 1954. It's so cool. The smell. I wish you could smell this. It smells great. These things are 12 feet deep and hold 10,000 gallons and these are the original fermentation vats from when they first started this distillery. Now I'm going to pan over here so you can see how deep this thing actually is. Now this one's already partially way full, but that is pretty deep. You don't want to go swimming in there. It's a three day process of fermentation. This is day one. Lots of bubbling, lots of stuff going on. This is day two. So a little bit more going, but it's calming down. This is day three. So day three, it's calmed down a lot. A lot, a little bit of bubbling, but it's it's almost coming out of here. It'll the come. sugar is losing the battle. Yeah. The is so this is the <laughs> distiller's beer. Yeah. And this will go, after fermentation, will go into distillation. That's where they get your low wine and then get your high wine. Yeah. This is so cool. They still use these old printing presses to make the labels for all their bottles. And these old things still work. So grab a bottle of Mako's Mark and look at the label. It got printed right here on one of these old printing presses. That's awesome. I was expecting a more uh, high-tech operation here. But it's just a little room with two of these printing presses. And then she's working on the, the stamp system here that is gonna put all the markings on the paper. That's cool. We just went through the Rick House. That's the Rick House right there. Holds about 40,000 barrels, 53 gallons per barrel. And so that's where it matures. I couldn't film in there because it was too dark, but um, they don't, they age theirs not based on time, but based on taste. So anywhere from five to eight years, but they have people who go in there and they'll take the bung out and they'll actually taste. And when it tastes good, it comes off. So they don't have a set time. So it's anywhere between five to eight years for maturation of Maker's Mark whiskey. And look at the grounds out here. This is beautiful. It's just, this is what you envision when you hear about a Kentucky distillery for bourbon. This is exactly what I would picture in my mind. And uh, this is, uh, I've been looking forward to this Maker's Mark tour for a long, long time. And uh, been this is our third trip to the bourbon trail. The first time I've been able to go to Maker's. So this is, uh, it's pretty fun. This is where they make uh, Maker's Mark 46. And that's because they use these staves right here. They'll take a barrel of regular Maker's Mark bourbon, put 10 of these staves in there. And the flavor profile uh, is stave profile number 46. So they named him Maker's Mark 46. After they put the staves in, they refill the barrel full of 53 gallons of Maker's Mark. Comes back in here, 50 degrees in here year round. These barrels will sit in here for nine weeks before they become Maker's Mark 46. And he just gave us an example. This barrel right here was put in here on May 15th and it'll sit in here for nine weeks. So I, I looked at my calendar, nine weeks from May 15th, that barrel right there will come out on July 17th, which is our granddaughter Harper's birthday. So happy birthday to Harper. That barrel's coming out on your birthday. Well, I'm walking behind the tour so that I can talk a little bit. We, we, we just saw the collection of pewter from Mrs. Samuels. And that is how Maker's Mark got his name because she had 
pewter collection and every pewter maker would stamp their mark on the, somewhere on the piece and that was called the mark of the maker and she liked that verbiage so flipped it and that's how we got the name maker's mark i can't believe it's already been over two years since we yeah. had our rb mattress by brooklyn bedding and our sleep has been great phenomenal it's been crazy life-changing sleep impacts your posture your mood and your overall health yes and when it comes to that stuff you really don't want to rely on the plywood like mattresses <laughs> that come in rvs when you buy your rv brand new yeah so we have the aurora lux huh? from rv mattress with the cooling technology that keeps our bodies at a perfect 88 degree sleeping temperature yes and we also have their cooling pillows their bamboo cotton sheets and the weighted blanket we love it so much that we even got a mattress from my mom mm -hmm. and she's loving it too and she doesn't live in an rv exactly which goes to show you you don't have to live in an rv to buy an rv mattress from brooklyn bedding they're for everybody and they come in regular sizes or rv sizes an rv mattress by brooklyn bedding also offers you a 120 night sleep trial 10-year warranty and free shipping from their factory in arizona the best part of all of it is we can save you 25 percent all you have to do is click on the link in the description of this video, go over to RV Mattress by Brooklyn Bedding, and type in the promo code WAGS at checkout. Oh, here comes Leslie's favorite part of the tour. The tasting. I live for this. <laughs> Which one's your dominant nostril? It's my left. <laughs> Honestly. You're a lefty? I, right. here, here comes the cask so drink. Us is just another word for barrel. Oh, God. Now, what that means is that this is stronger. Yes, that's one of the differences I love there. So this one comes a lot sweeter. Oh, you did pretty good on that one. Oh, oh never gelatin. mind, never mind. But it also has a <laughs> Got her on the back end. That's like a buttery taste. <laughs> yeah. And now we're in the gift shop. And you can do is you can go up here, purchase a bottle, and then you can hand dip it yourself. Yeah. Which I'm going to do. Okay. All right. Okay. That's how I dip, and that's how I roll. <laughs> oh, we got Wagsters dipping. Yeah. That's a good one. Oh, nice drip. Nice drip. And now, we are at the Waverly Hills Sanitarium, which is supposedly haunted. A lot of the ghost hunters have been here in the past. The sun's kind of putting a weird shadow on it so i'll try to get a better shot of it here in a little bit but um we're gonna go inside we're gonna do a tour and hopefully we will hear something or see something or feel something those gargoyles up there up top man are just creepy as hell this whole place is is creepy as hell all right they're not gonna let me film on the tour take pictures so we'll put some pictures on facebook instagram but as soon as we walk in caskets so that's not a good sign we're gonna go down this creepy ass hall and register for the tour but can't film on the tour so after we're done we'll let you know how creepy it was unfortunately can't bring you with us i'll let you know if we survive though and we have to go up here at this place and register and sign a waiver and if you have to sign a waiver there's a possibility some bad shit can happen to you we tried to do this last year yes and we did Ran out of time, just couldn't get to it. But how excited are you to be at the Waverly Hills Haunted Sanitarium? Very excited. Yeah. Very nervous. It's going to be awesome. You can see the creepy nurse statue back there in the courtyard. Yeah. I totally forgot when we booked it the time of year we were here. So yeah. it won't be dark, dark. Dark, dark. By the time we're done. It's a two hour it's tour. Two hour we're tour. starting at eight. So it will be dark by the time we get done. So part of it will still be light, part of it will be dark. Yeah, and that's but... when I'm going to start to freak myself out. So. Yeah, we'll have to pop, we'll pop back on afterwards and let you know whether it's worth it. How much did it cost to do this? $30. $30 a person? Yeah. Worth it. Absolutely. It's 
place is huge. We're going to get to see the body shoot. A body Were they shoot? disposed? But it, it I, did, a, I didn't know if he's research at all. Yeah, because it was a tuberculosis hospital. That's what I was where they, hearing. Yeah. yeah, where they had to come live when they had tuberculosis. And so there's a shoot when people died from it. Oh, shoot. A shoot. Not like bang, bang, bang I know. shoot. <laughs> but like a laundry shoot, but for <laughs> a bodies. laundry shoot for bodies. So they have yeah. to carry them down all the stairs and all that stuff. You just throw them down a little yeah, thing and they're automatically down we're to gonna get to see that the trucks that carried them out or an incinerator or whatever they whatever did with they them. Give. I would assume you'd burn them. Unless the family wanted them buried. Well, that was interesting and fun and scary. Yes. And everything all at once. But we had until this morning to finish talking about it because we want to look through all of our pictures. Yeah. See if we found anything. I'll throw up some mm -hmm. pictures while we're talking here, but I don't feel like I saw anything in any of my pictures. No. I, I enlarged them. Yeah. To see, I didn't see anything. There's definitely a feeling in the in the place. Yeah. You get feelings. Yeah. In certain places of the. The uh, body shoot was really the only place we actually saw anything. Yeah, and I, the, my camera didn't pick up what we were seeing, no, so I didn't impossible. get a picture of that. With, it was, with a phone camera, that's possible. That body shoot, we were already six feet under the ground to, to yeah, start. Yeah, on the, on the highest part, yeah. And then the body shoot goes down how many more feet? 400 and something? 450, At like a 45 degree angle, it's, it's almost, and so she threw a ball down there, and she's like, everybody be quiet, you hear the ball, it's one of those little rubber balls. Yeah, kids. Uh, kids ball. And she threw it down the chute, and you just heard bouncing, bouncing, yes. bouncing, bouncing. Forever. It felt like it was Never forever, gonna stop. but it was probably realistically maybe about 30, 40, 40 seconds. Yeah, I was supposed to say 45 seconds. But a ball traveling 45 degrees down a, a, an embankment on a concrete chute like that to take that long, long to get down. You could hear it at the end, boom, when it hits the, the wall. Hits the wall. Uh, yeah. But I'm like, holy Yeah, it was crap. insane. And there was uh, a brave gentleman on one of the tours the day before we went that went down to retrieve the balls that they yeah, threw down the there. Previous tours, and there's yes. no way I would have done it. Absolutely not. I mean, not it was for any amount of money would I walk down that. It was scary enough doing the tour on a group. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't imagine going there by yourself. All the way down that. Not just that, just anywhere in there. Oh, I mean, the yeah. rooms are creepy. Oh, yeah. They're, they're run down. It's abandoned. Um, there's bats in there, so they make some noises, which kind of spooks you sometimes. And so you just really don't know what's yeah. what's an apparition or what's a bat. Now, or... like, Wendy took pictures, and in her pictures, you can see orbs. Yeah, she got a couple she got some in, hers. in hers. Some other people in our group got some, some stuff in stuff, their pictures. Yeah. But, um, it is not only for the scarability factor, yeah. but the historical History, factor yeah, yeah, yeah. is crazy because yeah. all the historical stuff that went uh -huh. on with tuberculosis there, yeah. of course, that was the main focus of the, of the hospital was tuberculosis yeah. in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. And, but the reason that the whole place got shut down is the scariest part. Yeah. And that's where they had the, the mentally ill, insane, like strapped to the beds insane. Uh, yeah strapped to the beds insane yeah. on that top floor and so the and the top floor is small mm -hmm. not a lot going on up there but it was just it was spooky it was crazy yeah. you think about all the things that happened there the operating room yeah, was, creepy. was creepy i mean it's you know all just in an operating room. really creepy so uh yeah. man definitely worth going to waverly so hills worth going yeah and i think the night is the best way to do it well, our, it was, our, we got best of both worlds. Yes, and she said that this time frame is the best because half of the two hours is daylight. It's, sun is already gone down, yeah. but you still have some light. And then that last half, it's dark. So you get you can see the yeah, building gosh. in light at first, and then it's just those rooms get dark. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. It's crazy. But um, I didn't go into a room that somebody wasn't already in. I did a little bit. Some So sometimes they, they give us the opportunity to... All right, we'll just hang out here, and you guys can go explore this floor. Yeah, no, on I your stuck own. with somebody. I was not going to be alone. And uh, I did go out in no. some of the rooms alone a couple of times, no. No. just because I felt like it was my better chance to get something on camera, because they're they're more likely to to be around less people. I felt yeah. like the group would probably freak the tour. The tour, yeah, them from. But it was really cool. Definitely worth going. Yeah. Uh, we're wrapping up our Wagster meetup. 
Yes. All done. Had breakfast this morning with the Wagsters, yes. and that was kind of the last event. Belinda made a wonderful biscuits and gravy and scrambled eggs brunch. Yeah, Teresa made the, the, yeah. the biscuits, biscuits, and Belinda made the gravy, and everybody brought their own coffee, and there were some donuts and muffins and all kinds yeah. of good stuff, and it was it was just really cool. It's been a really cool week here with the Wagsters, and we we're, it's awesome. And yeah. even though we're coming off the road, we're still gonna keep doing these. We're gonna yes, we're gonna try to keep doing these. Uh, from time to time. Gotta bring the family together at least once a year. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to do it with a place with cabins because we don't have, we won't have an RV yeah. anymore. But but yeah, this is something that we really uh, enjoy. Hey, stick around for a few seconds. We're gonna honor a fallen hero. If you want to get involved with helping us help veterans, everything you need to know is right down in the description of the video. Appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.